Hey everyone and welcome back to yet another episode, yet another, yet another episode of RQ where we answer frequently asked questions about life. Thank you so much for all the overwhelming response. The last few editions of RQ, which were about, I hate my job, but I can't quit have done reasonably well. I think it resonated with a lot of you. If you haven't checked them out, then go check them out. They're linked in the comment section below. Today's question is a very important question that I get asked so often. How do I network? Because apparently networking is the shit. Like everybody is asking you to network. And if you don't have a network, you're a nobody. You're essentially useless and you may as well just retire and go into a cave because networking is what makes opportunities happen. And I don't want to sound flippant around that because it is true to a great extent. I have benefited a lot from my network and that has been largely the ISB network that I gained because I went to ISB and that batch has helped me tremendously in all my years post ISB as well. And it's been 15 years, still continues to help tremendously and the alum base that we have built and so on. But it's possible that not all of us have a network of a great business school or a school or a college or whatever else it is. So the onus is on us to build that network. And I get asked this question a lot from introverts because somehow someone told them that introverts cannot network. Somehow this impression has been built into people that if you're an introvert, you might as well not exist. And that's clearly not true because introversion and extroversion has nothing to do with your ability to have a conversation with people. Introversion is simply the fact that you gain more energy by being with your own self rather than being with people. So yes, I do get it how it could relate to being not network friendly, but I think the time is gone when networking was all about going to conferences and events, showing up in a suit and handing out your business cards as if it meant the world. Times have changed and so has networking. So in this video, what I'm going to leave you with are three things that I believe are critical or possibly the best ways that you build a network. Having said that, though, when I say anything is three things, people are like, ah, three things, I'll note them down and get them done. And the way I do it, I'll be like the best networker. It's not going to happen like that. This is intense. Networking does take time. Networking is something that you'll have to do consistently as a discipline and over a period of time, you begin to reap the benefits of the network that you've built and the tasks and the actions that you've taken. But you got to start. And let me tell you what it is to build one. Because guess what? I have one and I have a lot of people approach me for a connection so I can differentiate between what's a good approach and an approach that doesn't work. So let me go to the first one, which is if you want a network, the best way is to actually reach out. The best way is to reach out to people. I live by my life motto, which is if you do not ask, the answer is always no. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. And you will never ever fail if you don't ask, because at some point of time, that will lead to a yes. Having said that though, there is an art and a science behind how do you connect with people. So let's say you want to reach out to me and it's possible that you feel I could help you as an investor. I can help you as a mentor. I can help you with feedback on your product or your business or maybe life in general, whatever is it that you want to. And you just send me an email and I open that email up. And the first thing I read is dear sir slash ma'am. And I'm like, holy shit. This person is so lazy that they didn't even bother to check the gender of the person they're sending the email to. And you may laugh at this, but I kid you not the number of emails I receive who know that they're writing to Ankur Variku, but still would write, dear sir slash ma'am. And <coughs> there was a time when I actually replied back saying, who is the sir slash ma'am? Do you not know that you're writing to me? And they were like, no, I don't know whether it's you reading it or your team reading it. But guess what? You're writing to Ankur Vaniku, so you might as well assume that that's the person that is reading the email. And you will start with their Ankur 
or if you want to be respectful and you feel that there is a big age gap, just say, dear Mr. Variku or hey, Mr. Variku, whatever the case may be. But the minute you start an email with dear sir slash ma'am, you just lost the plot. It's not going to get any attention. Another example, entrepreneurs writing to me and saying, hey, Ankur, that's a good start. Hope you're doing well. Love your videos on LinkedIn. You're so inspiring. Da, 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 da. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm working on this idea and I would love to get your feedback on it. Attached my deck. Like, really? I am going to get your email, pause, download the attachment, go through it, read every slide, Think about then the content I've read, gather my feedback on it, and now write it out on an email to ship it back to you. Not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. This is not how things work. If you, and this is the most powerful lesson that you need to know about networking. If you are disrespectful, of the time that you want someone's time from, you are never going to get it. If you are disrespectful of the person's time from whom you want time, you're never going to get it. So please do your research and your homework before you connect. Figure out how is it that that person can help you. Be thoughtful around that. When you strike a connect, and there are so many situations where I've got powerful emails, emails that have tried to form a bond, emails that have worked miraculously well because they have gone through the effort and the homework of establishing how is it that Ankur Variku can help them. And it's not something as generic as, hey, I want to pick your brains on something. Why don't you give me feedback on my business? Why don't you help me with life? I am stuck and I would love to have a conversation with you. These are meaningless connects. I am never going to respond to any one of them and nor will anyone else who values their time, which is most likely the people that you're trying to form a connect with. If you do want to get their time, value their time. And the best way to value their time is to dig deep into what is it that they can do for you and be thoughtful around that. Here's a good example. There's someone who wrote in and saying, I'm running a business and I have built this product that is a marketplace where you connect customers with businesses. And the consumers will come, they will search for the businesses, they will find a business of their choice they will book and now go to the business to avail the service. Great. But here's the problem. When they go and avail the service at the business end, the quality of service that is granted or given to them is not in my control. I don't control that. But as a platform, I'm the one who suggested that the customer could go to this business. So mentally in their head, they're thinking my product should be responsible for the quality delivered to me. Now that's a crazy situation where the consumer believes that they that I am responsible for the quality, but I have no control over the quality granted. And I noticed that that's how you built nearby as well, because when you buy a deal from a restaurant, and you go to the restaurant, it's the quality of the restaurant that determines the entire experience, but you don't control that quality. It could be bad food, it could be bad air conditioning, it could be bad seats, bad service. You don't control it. So how is it that you were able to navigate that? Because if you gave me what you did to solve that, this would help me immensely. Bam! Is there any way that I will not respond to this email? I absolutely will. I will absolutely form a connect. I will absolutely love to have a conversation with an individual because guess what? He or she has gone through the hard work of identifying what is it that I have done in my life and how is that applicable? Another example, someone wrote in and saying, you know what, I am an MBA student in the US and I've spent some gazillion dollars for this course and this degree but I am not liking it. I'm not enjoying myself. I feel that my true calling is come back to India and work in India because I feel that's where the growth is and so on and so forth. But it's just such a hard decision to make. It's just such a hard decision to make because I'm clearly invested in it, 
not just financially, but also emotionally. And my world invested in it also emotionally for me to have a conversation with my parents that I don't want to do this MBA anymore and come back to India is a really hard one to have. And I noticed that you did the exact same thing several years back, but in a different context as well. And I'd love to know how you thought about this, because whatever your experience was, I'm sure this will be helpful. Brilliant, simple, and so, so effective. And that is why it's also important that if you're trying to reach out to someone, don't just reach out to them just because they look cool, just because they look as if they can answer everything, because everyone has an expertise. If you reach out to me on how to become a football coach, I'll be like, <laughs> I don't know. I have know nothing about being a football coach and I can't speak or tell you anything. And it may seem like I know everything because I just ramble about every possible topic under the sun. But the point is, I have my expertise and I clearly speak about that and write about that and feel about that a lot more than other things that I do. And you have to then identify who's the connect that you want to form with the work that you have. And those are the connects that are important. So long story short, the number one thing that is required for connections to be made and a network to be established is please reach out. There is no excuse for you not to do that anymore. The world's brilliantly flat now. Imagine less than 10 years back, if you wanted to reach out to Elon Musk, there was no way to do that. Like literally zero mechanism for you to reach out to Elon Musk. You wanted to reach out to Shah Rukh Khan. There was no way that you could have reached out to him except just standing in front of Manna, the like, Shah Rukh, I love you. That's it. That's not a network connect. It's just something which is what fans do. The point is, today there is no excuse for you not to connect with the people that you want to connect to. And it needn't be celebrities or influencers or personalities that are within your reach. It could be anyone. It could be someone who's a hiring manager in the company that you wish to apply to. It could be the CEO or the founder of a product that you really want to work at. It could be someone, you know what? It could be your life partner. It could actually be your life partner. But guess what? If you send a message to a girl or a guy saying, hey, I want to make friendship with you, you're never going to get a response. And you know that. The best way to strike a conversation is to form the connect, to actually say things, mean things, write things that form the connect. And that is what we hear in success stories. That's what we see time and again happen in the real world. And there's no reason why you wouldn't or you shouldn't do that. I can go on and on about how cold emails is sent out. And maybe I'll, I'll speak about this specifically in some other video, but you get the gist of it. That's the number one thing. Number two is there are a lot of people, including the ones that you want to connect with, including the ones that you want to have in your network that are creating content or have a social media profile or a personality. And that doesn't mean that they are widely successful, that they're followed by a lot of people. It could be just anyone. Like literally anyone in tech is on Twitter. Almost everyone that you know is in some way on LinkedIn. On, on LinkedIn. I, I was to say LinkedIn. I was like, oh, that's a, that's a cool new social network. LinkedIn. Almost everyone that you know is on Instagram. And guess what? All three channels, Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram, are direct connect channels. You can write into anyone and if you are meaningfully engaging, they will respond. But there's a chance. And let's say the first one didn't work. You wrote and wrote and wrote and you were very thoughtful and you were very meaning and well-meaning and you were quite deliberate in your process. But for some reason, you haven't got a response. But here's what you can do. And this is what happens to me in my real life as well. You engage with their content. You engage with their content in just as thoughtful a manner as you did when you struck a relationship or tried to when you wrote a connect request for them. So someone writes something and you will come back with some response. And it's not like, I love you. Oh, this is so awesome. Double heart. No, it is meaningful. It is thoughtful. It's something that will stay in their mind, not necessarily by the name of yours, but just by the content of it. And if you do that regularly, believe me, they will recognize you by just your username. It's just as simple as that. I can, 
identify the regular commenters and engagement people on all my social media profiles. I know them by their usernames. The minute I see them, I instantly recognize them. Do I know them as individuals? No. Do I know them who they are? No. There are times I don't even know what gender they are. I don't even know what their name is because their username is like, hey, something, something, X, Y, Z. But I do know they're the ones who regularly engage with my content. So if they were to send me a comment or they were to DM me or they were to do anything with my content that is around, hey, Ankur, I've been a regular follower of you and I've commented a lot and engaged with a lot of your content and I would love for your help to come by because here's why. I will absolutely respond. And I have responded. I have responded to a lot of my followers who regularly engage with the content. And that's true for almost everyone. Everyone out there is either tweeting or putting up stories on Instagram or the feeds or is posting something on LinkedIn or has a persona or a profile on them. And that's when you have content coming in from them and you now have the ability to engage with them meaningfully and get their attention. This is slow, it's deliberate, it takes time, but it's proven to work. It is miraculously effective, tremendously, incredibly powerful, because there's no undoing it. Over time, when you would have contributed a lot to the content of that individual, engaged with it in meaningful comments, engaged with it in meaningful deliberation, they will stay forever. They will just be there forever. And at any point of time, if that individual is glancing through their comment, they will be like, hey, that's a regular. Ankur Variku keeps, keeps tweeting and keeps retweeting and keeps commenting on, on my tweets. And, and usually his, his comments are, are quite, quite mature. They're, they're quite thoughtful. They, they make a lot of sense. He's not just gibberish. It's not just some random fan following. It actually makes sense. And that's when you record that, it registers in their mind, and you have a segue on making that foot in the door happen. And that's the second way that you do that. It's worked beautifully for me. I have got so many people connected with me because I engage with their comments, uh, with their content and do that in an active manner. And not because it's forced on me, it's because I genuinely like their content and I genuinely feel that they can help me a lot with some things in my life. And thus I meaningfully engage with their content and over time they would see that this is someone who makes sense. And mind you, this is before I got the blue tick. This is before I was Ankur Variku. This is before I was anybody. And it's very easy for you to think, oh, Ankur Variku will write on someone, someone will notice, of course. No, that's not the case. I was a nobody when I used to do this. I've seen it work and that's why I'm sharing it with you. Not as some cool celebrity standing here telling you, oh, I rock and if I were to comment on someone, of course someone would reply. Clearly not. If I were to just comment on Elon Musk, he wouldn't even notice, forever. If I were to comment on anything by Bill Gates or by Mark Zuckerberg, they wouldn't notice, forever. But if I genuinely wanted to get connected to them, not that I want, but if I genuinely wanted to get connected to them, I will engage with their content and I will engage in a meaningful manner and in a disciplined fashion and in a consistent fashion. And over time, there is no doubt in my head that they will notice and I would have registered in their mind. So at that point of time, I would send them a DM or I would ask for the help, they'll not refuse. Which brings me to the third point. And the third way of forming a connect or building a network is of course what you already know, but let me just state it out because it is and still continues to be a very effective way of doing so. And that is go through someone who's a shared connect. Go through someone who's a shared connect. And this is how the world truly works. It's a matrix of trust. It's a matrix of trust. Ankur Variku trusts X. You know X and very well so. So if you were to ask X, hey X, can you do me a favor and place a good word for me in front of Ankur so that if I send him an email, then I can use you as a reference point and that might work. Or better still, can you send an email to Ankur connecting me to him? And if X says, yes, I will do that and I trust X, great, you've done your job very well. 
That's how most of the world functions. That's how we function in our real lives. Most of our friends have come from other friends that we knew. Most of our I was to say most of our life partners. Our life partners, our spouses, our wives, our husbands, our wife, our husband, our boyfriends and our girlfriends have in some way come from other friends and friends that we trusted, friends that introduced us to them and that's how the real world also functions. So there's no reason for you to believe that that's not going to function in the so-called business world as well. It's even more so the way that things work. Everything flows on trust Everything flows on trust. So if you can find people who know the individual or know and know and know an individual, even if it's two hops or three hops, that's still a great way to connect. But it is important that whosoever you're reaching out through has the right reputation. Let me tell you what I mean by that. On a daily basis, I get a lot of emails which are like, hey, Ankur, What's up? Long time. Connecting you to X. I hope this really works. Great guy. You'll enjoy your time with him. And I'm like, that's okay. Who are you? And that's point is, the one who's introducing me to that person, I don't even know that person. It's possible I've interacted with him or her. It's possible that I've had a fleeting association of some sorts. But it's not a person that I trust. It's not a person that I would respond to. It's not a person whose opinion I value. So it's very important that when you ask, hey, do you know Ankur Variku? You also ask, how well do you know him? In what capacity do you know him? Is he going to even listen to you or not? And people will take offense to this question, which means don't ask them. If there's anyone who takes offense to this question, that's the best way for you to find out that they're not going to work for you. Because guess what? It's like, hey, do you know Ankur Varigo? Yes, of course I know Ankur Varigo. We're like best friends and so on. No one says that. Oh, everyone who knows me, or for that matter, everyone who knows you, will never be like, yeah, of course I know him. Like, how dare you ask? We're like, yeah, of course I know him. He's like a childhood friend. Oh, we've been to school together. Of course I know, I know him really well. Of course I know him really well. And that's how you would say this. So, it's very, very important that you don't stop at, do you know him? You also ask, how well do you know her? How, how do you know her? How have you been associated with her? Because it's important that you strike that depth of the relationship as well as against just the fact of whether they know you or not. And that's the third way. So summarizing, because it's been like 20 plus minutes now, the best way to form a network is to actually write to people that you wanna to connect to. It is the most obvious way of doing it. There is no excuse anymore in this world not to do it anymore. Everyone's available to you directly, but you have to be thoughtful, you have to be deliberate, you have to be very, very precise and do your homework when you're trying to form that connect, when you're trying to form that network. And it will work. It works for me. I have numerous examples of wonderfully drafted emails that have been thoughtful, that have been very precise, that have been structured, that clearly show there's a lot of effort that has gone into writing them. And those are the emails that I will always respond. Even if I can't help, I will almost feel obliged to respond to those emails because they're just so wonderfully written. And I will make it a point to acknowledge them for how wonderfully they've been written. Number two, there are enough and more people who have a social media persona or are creating content on social media on a consistent basis. Engage with that content. Engage with that content in a disciplined fashion, in a thoughtful fashion, in a fashion that is mature, it's provocative, it's, it's thought-provoking. It stays in their mind as someone who's always adding something new and meaningful to the conversation or the content that they're creating. And if you do that over time, you would register in their head. And at that point of time, if you were to ask for a connect, they will not refuse. Enough and more examples. People that I would see the name of as a username, I'd like, uh huh, I know him, I know her. I don't know him or her, but I know of them. And I know that they engage with my content very regularly. And I know that they are always adding some new dimension, something more to the content than 
I do. And the third and the most obvious way of how it's been done all these years and still continues to be a very effective way of doing it is to always use a shared connect. Go through someone who knows someone who knows someone, but make sure that when you ask them, do you know X? And X is the person you want to connect to. You also ask, how well do you know them? How do you know them? And do you think that they will respond if you were to write to them connecting me? And if they were to take offense at that, that's a good sign because that most likely means they will not be helpful. If they, of course, I know him and I know him very well and I'm more than happy to help because you're a good friend, good sign. That's when it means it may work and that's the way to do it. As you can imagine, this has nothing to do with introversion. This has nothing to do with you being a shy kid. This has nothing to do with you being uncomfortable with crowds because guess what? The world's changed and now all the networking can actually happen with you sitting in the comfort of your home with just your phone, your laptop, or your whatever iPad. You can connect to anyone that you want globally and they will respond if you do your work right. I hope this helps. This was long, but I want it to be deliberate and I want it to be all explanatory. If you have any more questions, I would love to answer them. But if you like this and if you thought that this was useful, please, please like, share and subscribe to my channel because this is how you will get the notifications that a new video has been put up. We're very regular with our content on a weekly basis and I would it would mean the world to me if you subscribe because that would just tell me that there are a lot more people who value this content and whatever is it that we're sharing is in some small way making a change happen. Until next week, I see you all. Have a wonderful week and thank you for listening in. Bye. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that whenever we put up a new video, you're aware of it.